giving estimates of how many uh, power plants can be uh, saved or don't need to be built. Um, I don't go into the numbers. This is uh, a ranking over the uh, European countries. Germany is the left column. Um, most of the studies are looking at households in the residential market. And our company, as a startup, made a very conscious decision to not target the household the residential market. Per household, there is very little money to be saved. And it's, uh, it's, it's a big uh, change of behavior that's needed. You, know, you, already, you always get into this washer-dryer uh, discussion uh, where people immediately say, well, do I really want to wash my, my stuff at night and the neighbors wake up and, and so on. So we don't go there. We focus on large devices. Um, another picture I want to give you. What is the smart grid? Our, our interpretation of the smart grid is this. Um, before the smart grid, before it was smart, um, you had a heart pumping blood or energy into the system. So this is our... Um, uh, um, blood system. Um, then in the next step, you have decentral feeding in of renewable energy. So suddenly the blood also comes back. It's a, um, it's a circulation system. But the whole thing doesn't make sense until you add a nervous system with sensors everywhere and a central computing unit that makes sense out of it and regulates everything. So for the first time, you go full circle, you have a feedback loop, and uh, every engineer at least knows what that means. Immediately efficiency gains. Um, the whole um, smart grid market covers uh, value added, the whole value added chain from generation over transmission, distribution into the, the consumption the, in the home. Um, uh, smart grid um, is a large space. We're not touching the utility grid um, uh, machinery or plant. We're not going into households. We are, with demand response, um, a layer, an application layer, an application of the smart grid, and we think a very important or the most visible part of the smart grid. Other players um, are Enernoc, Converge in, in the US. Uh, alone in the US, uh, some predictions say that's a two to three billion dollar market in 2015 and growing. There's no good numbers for Germany or Europe. We have our own numbers, of course, but we're not sharing them here. Um, there are already uh, um, indexes, uh, for example, the Von Tobel Smart Index, and two of the companies are demand response companies. And I think that's too small to read. Uh, all very rosy predictions of where demand is, is going. These are the two main ones, summarizing everything. The CEO of Cisco says, the smart grid will be 10 to 100 times bigger than the internet. How can this be, other than it's Cisco and it's very advantageous to them? Um, that's because this is about machine-to-machine -machine communication. So the machines are communicating amongst each other. There's many more machines now than people or internet users. And the demand response application is the killer application for the smart grid, says the chairman of the US uh, uh, Energy Regulatory Commission. Um, I think I have two or three minutes um, to go more into Antelios. So we are a German startup. Um, uh, of course, the idea is inspired from the US. Uh, the, my, my colleague, the founder of Antelios, spent a year uh, at the MIT uh, as a Sloan Fellow and was exposed to demand response as an idea, as a business model, and uh, he was introduced to the CEOs of Converge and Enernoc. And he started wondering why doesn't that exist in Germany. Um, and it took quite a while until uh, 2009, uh, end of 2009, when the three founders met. And the three founders are uh, from the um, telecommunications and software industry and uh, consulting industry. So um, we said, well, with, all, with our know-how on how to build large, scalable systems for telecoms, why don't we build this uh, for the smart grid? It took us uh, until July 2010 to uh, incorporate formally the uh, Aktiengesellschaft. We had two angel financing rounds in, in uh, Q3. 
Q4, we started a paid pilot project with one of the top 10 German utilities. So we are in revenue, actually. And we're building the platform, we're scaling it up as we grow. Uh, I think that was very important for us uh, to be able to raise the Series A round. So we're not taking money, disappear for two or three years in development phase, and then come back, maybe, with the right product. But we're in revenue, we're applying it today. We raised our Series A um, in January. From, uh, we got, as a lead investor, Yellow and Blue, a cleantech investor out of the Netherlands, and a high-tech Gründerfond in, in Bonn, very well known to us Germans. Uh, in March, today, the stage is we are in revenue, we're building the technology platform, and we are signing up participants, so large industrial energy users. Um, what was, I have two or three slides on success factors, because I, I'm surprised a little bit by myself, because when I came back from the US to Germany, I said, oh my god, there's little VC money, so many good ideas, so that'll be tough to raise money, but here we are, and we're successful so far. Um, I think the idea is that, that we're not copying uh, a U.S. model in Germany. The point is that it's, the idea is certainly inspired from the U.S., but the market is completely different here. The players are different, regulations are different, and we are not afraid of, uh, let's say, Enonoc coming to Germany and, and doing their business alone. Uh, timing is perfect. Of course, uh, uh, and even without Japan, of course, we have the discussion of what to do next in the energy market. And the, the most pressing problem in the, in the grid operators uh, um, uh, scene is how do we deal with all this renewable energy being fed in from the North Sea. It has to be transported, it has to be used, and, and it has to be synchronized with the demand side. Um, team, I said already, people... Um, yeah, we, we can show successes as entrepreneurs, uh, starting and exiting companies, and building large-scale telecom billing systems, which is very applicable here. And last slide, um, I think it was very important from the beginning to build a large network in the industry um, between the utilities, the, uh, the uh, grid operators, the regulatory body, politics, and and all the groups who are forming this existing energy market. Now, this is actually the, the biggest adventure for us as a startup. We're entering an existing market. This is very different from creating the internet market in the mid-90s, where there was nothing. Here, we, play, we are playing with the big boys. Okay. Um, I think if there's only one message I want to leave you with is that uh, with our technology, uh, we have three advantages. We're faster, cheaper, and greener than building huge power plants. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Questions? Great. Um, let's have a little round of questions, like one or two over there. Microphone runner. Please. <laughs> Hi, um, thanks for that impressive uh, presentation. My name is Frederick Brodeck from Plus Ultra Asset Management. Um, as far as I, I understand it, your, your, your model lives from the volatility of, of supply of, of, of uh, renewable energy. Now, uh, as you, I'm sure, are aware of, um, there are plans to, to, to connect different sources of renewable energy uh, mm -hmm. in, in a European supergrid. Now, I fully agree, you know, that'll take a while until it is uh, done and operational. But um, how would that impact your, your, your model? I mean, if, if, if supply of renewable energy suddenly becomes less volatile, mm -hmm. um, how does that impact your model? Well, it doesn't. Um, I, I guess our point is always, um, even if, if, if you combine all these, these decentral sources, our point is somebody has to control them. It's not automatically averaging out everything. If, 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 if you add up two statistically, statistical noise patterns, you actually double the noise. On average, everything's fine, but you never get rid of the peaks. And somebody has to manage the peaks. Uh, for example, another question would be, uh, uh, how about all these uh, um, EVs, right, batteries on the streets? This is great. We want to manage them. This is our business. We love them. 
But we are not building our, our, our business plan on them. We don't know when they come and how much there will be when.